Hello and welcome to the John Cabot Academy Open Event. Um, what we aim to do in this presentation is introduce you to the school, introduce you to key members of staff and introduce you to some of our students. We hope during the course of this presentation that we will anticipate some of the frequently asked questions. But if as you listen, something does occur to you, please do post it in the chat and we will either be able to apply to reply in writing as we go along or we will reply verbally at the end of the presentation. Let me introduce John Cabot Academy to you. This slide uh, describes what we what our vision is for this academy. It describes what we want for our students and then I'm going to frame this presentation in terms of our vision for our students. So if I start with empowerment, we want to empower our students. We aspire for our students to thrive academically, to flourish and grow as young people. When they leave us, they will have a strong sense of self, of their place in the world and the agency to fulfil their potential. We'll achieve this by ensuring that student success is recognised and rewarded. And without apology, we will expect that everyone works hard and tries their best. So we'll do that in three ways. And the first way is being inspired by learning. We aspire to create a learning community, and that is both staff and students being engaged, challenged and inspired. Because when you're challenged, that's when you take risks, make mistakes and learn. We endeavour to develop a sense of wonder in our learning, so we are inquisitive, critical and curious. And we'll achieve this by providing moments of awe and wonder both inside and outside the classroom. And I'd like you to introduce you to my moment of awe and wonder. What you can see there on the screen is a pair of brackets. And I have a very strong memory of a maths lesson when I was about 12 years old, where I genuinely believed I had been the first person in the world to ever invent using two sets of brackets. But it was just such a critical moment in my education that really sparked my love of maths, which meant I went on to do a physics degree in Bristol and here I am today. And what we as all teachers aspire to do is give our students those moments of awe and wonder that, that basically change the course of their lives. So it could be uh, because we take them canoeing down the Ardèche in France and they have an incredible experience, or it could be sat in a maths classroom on a wet Friday afternoon where suddenly something just makes the light bulb go off in their heads. That's what we want for them. So we have a, a well-planned five year curriculum within the JCA and the intent of our curriculum is there on the screen. You can see again that we are trying through our curriculum to develop that sense of self, and place and ultimately develop our students self agency. Because we have this strong curriculum, uh, it means that at John Cabot we get consistently strong results. What I'd like to do is just take a moment to explain what happened in the summer of 2020 with the GCSE results. So you may be aware that all the GCSE exams in March were cancelled. And the government asked schools to say uh, to award our students a centre assessed grade, which we believed was the most likely grade that that child would achieve had they sat their exams in the summer. And then in August, the government decided that they would award students either the best of the centre assessed grade or the grade that the government's algorithm um, awarded. So students were awarded the best of either of those two things. So the results are not comparable with previous years and it's why you won't find schools talking particularly about the precise progress eight outcome or 5A to C in English and maths that schools got because they're incomparable with previous years. However, our results were exceptional. They were absolutely in the same pattern, consistently strong as we get year after year. A very good measure, I suppose, of how good they were is the fact that 100% of our students have left us and they are in education, employment or training. 
What I'd like to do now is just to give you a moment to uh, listen to two of the best heads of departments we have in the school, two departments that year after year get very strong results. I'd like to introduce you to Saul Graydon, who is our head of English, and after him, Don Williams, who is our head of maths. OK, hello. Um, as uh, as Willis has said, I'm Saul Graydon. I'm the head of English here, and that is an absolute honour and a privilege uh, for the students that we have here are quite exceptional. And uh, it has been my great honour over the past year uh, to teach some fantastic students who've gone on to do amazing things. And that is very much what we expect from all of the students that arrive here. We have a little bit of a slightly different take to English. Of course we're reading, of course we're writing, and of course we're telling stories, but we want our students to come here and gain a sense of self through the ability to use language and understand others. And we want them to gain a sense of place in the world by exploring the different cultures, the different viewpoints, and being able to express their own opinion in a way that is a voice that needs to be heard. We also wish to provide students with the knowledge and the skills, of course we need to do that, to be able to communicate appropriately for all their groups in school and for the rest of their lives. So yes, you will see familiar things in our curriculum. They'll be studying texts that you may even have been taught, but there'll also be a range of diverse and interesting texts which will enable them to explore themselves, their identity and engage in the world. If you were to come round our classrooms, the kind of thing that I would expect that you would find would be students engaging in confident discussions and dis discussing ideas. We would also see them creating and crafting their ideas, not settling just for the first time, but working on it and improving. And we all know that that practice is what makes great students. We will be looking at their reading and you would see them understanding a whole range of texts in, and being able to consider how those texts have changed over time. And finally, I would really be looking that at the end, they will have their own personal voice. So throughout our curriculum, which engages not just in English, but in English literature, they will have a blend of the reading, the writing, oracy and a great breadth that will enable them uh, to carry themselves forward for the rest of their lives. I'm now going to pass on to the head of maths. Thank you. So I am Don Williams. I am the joint head of maths at John Cabot actually. It's a, such an important subject that there are two of us. Um, I've been a teacher for seven years now. I love teaching and I love teaching maths in particular because it is often perceived by people as a very, very challenging, difficult subject. But with the right teacher input and the right way of visualising things and the right sort of classroom culture where we can not be afraid to get things wrong and explore mistakes, um, maths is not a difficult subject. It's a subject that can offer us a huge amount that is rewarding when we learn sort of basic rules and apply them to new situations. I love teaching maths at John Cabot in particular because you have a wonderful team of maths teachers. We spend a lot of time together planning things collaboratively, how we're going to approach topics, how we're going to best visualise a subject for not just the students in our classes, but the students in all classes across the school when they're learning maths. Um, as a result, we have a huge amount of consistency across our maths team. Um, that's reflected in our exam results, of course it is, but that's not our priority, that's not the be all and end all. Um, that is just a byproduct of what we try to achieve um, across our whole team in lessons. So what do students experience in maths lessons at John Cabot? Well, firstly, we're very lucky, they have lots of opportunities to go to maths lessons. Um, and with that, they have lots of chance to practice at home um, regularly. And within lessons, there are opportunities to explain, to investigate things, to conjecture, to provoke, all the sorts of things that we want to see to get students in a place where they are comfortable enough to learn and have that element of discomfort which is challenging their thinking to really move them forward. We also are big on oracy in the schools, so we have lots of links with literacy. Um, at our school we often get asked about math sets, they do exist but they're absolutely not the be all and end all. What matters to us is the experience and the confidence 
that students leave us with um, at the end of year 11. Um, obviously with that in mind I look forward hopefully to meeting a lot of the prospective students watching this video. Can I introduce you now to Priya, one of our Year 11 students who's going to explain what it's like to study here at John Cabot. At John Cabot, I have to say my teachers have always been so supportive. They've always offered extra support, revision and even gave up their lunches to ensure we have a deep understanding of what we learn in class. I'm currently in my last year of school. This year is generally full of a lot of pressure, but I do feel at ease knowing that my teachers have given me revision packs and set our lessons online so we can access them after school. They're working really hard so that we are prepared for our GCSEs and I feel quite confident for the upcoming months. Although of coronavirus and having missed months of school, we have had support throughout to, and been kept up to date with our work. I honestly do appreciate all the work my teachers have done for me and I'm sure your child will too. Thank you, Priya. We aspire to meet the needs of every person in the academy. We have a supportive and compassionate culture in which the whole person is nurtured and the voice of our students is valued. We achieve this by having consistent boundaries and well understood routines that everybody knows and understands. This consistency is the key to feeling safe. When you have that feeling of safety and security, you are then able to develop and express yourself as an individual. So we do run a behaviour system called Ready to Learn. It has really clear, high expectations for the behaviour, both within the classrooms and in the social spaces. And it means that what we don't have is uh, boisterous behaviour that can feel um, concerning to some students in social spaces. And it means we don't have low level disruption in our classrooms. It, Describes the behaviours that we wish students to demonstrate. So you may find a teacher in a classroom asks the students to be a quality audience. You may find that in the corridors we ask our students to uh, walk quickly and whisper. It provides that sense of clarity that students need. It is a rewards based system. So every lesson students register is taken, but instead of just taking a register mark, what we do is we reward them. Uh, everyone is awarded a four. They have demonstrated the ready to learn behaviors when they arrive and many students are awarded a five, which shows they've demonstrated excellent learning behaviors in the classroom. There are also register codes for warnings and being sent to our separated learning rooms. What this means is that we can reward our students with lots of rewards events throughout the course of the year. It could be anything from going to Thorpe Park to having hot chocolate and donuts. Ultimately, our behaviour system relies on three things. There is absolute clarity, there is consistency, and then there are relationships. And it's the relationships that our students have with their staff that enables them to develop as individuals, to develop that sense of self. We have a very strong bullying policy. We don't tolerate bullying at all. What happens if there is any sense of bullying behaviour is we need our students to come and tell us. And often that's the hardest bit. And that's why we work so hard on those relationships between staff and students. If a child is bullied, we uh, investigate thoroughly, we sanction accordingly and we put students on what we call our bullying log. And then if the bullying were to recur, then the sanctions get worse. And what happens is that one way or another, the bullying does stop. Ready to Learn also covers our uniform. We're very proud of our uniform. We think it demonstrates a real set of high expectations and actually more importantly, it gives everyone a sense of pride and a sense of community. Um, if students arrive to school and they aren't in uniform, then we ask them um, to put on some of the stock of uniform that we've got so everyone feels that sense of belonging. What I'd like to do now is hand you over to Joe Ship, who is our head of transition. That means transition from year six into year seven and the head of year seven. Hello, uh, my name is Joe Ship. 
and I am the Year 7 Zone Team Leader and Lead of Personal, Social, Health and Economic Education here at John Cabot Academy. I am also now responsible for the transition of Year 6 pupils, uh, primary school pupils into Year 7. I work alongside a dedicated team of experienced practitioners who work tirelessly to ensure that our new Year 7 students from our numerous feeder schools across Bristol and South Gloucestershire arrive here at John Cabot Academy feeling safe, happy and are already confident learners. We work closely with all of our primary schools and continue to do so to ensure that as a staff body we have a full and clear understanding of all of our individual student needs and are able to fulfil our own school ethos of inspire, learning, nurture and raising our community. We welcome your students with us next September and we very much look forward to meeting each and every one of them. Thank you very much, Joe. Can I now introduce you to Alex Linett, who is our SENCO? Hello, I'm Alex Linett, the SENCO. I lead a team of seven specialised learning support assistants who provide additional care and guidance for students with SEN. As John Cabot is a mainstream school, our provision is made for the full spectrum of SEND so that we can meet the need of all our students. We support with cognition and learning, including specific difficulties, including dyslexia, dyscalculia and dyspraxia, communication and interaction needs, including autistic spectrum disorder, speech and language and communication, sensory and physical needs, including auditory and visual difficulties, and social, emotional and mental health difficulties, including anxiety related disorders, ADHD and ADD. Our, um, all our teaching staff have undertaken training on understanding and meeting the needs of our students. Here, every teacher is a teacher of SEND. Additional advice, assistance and support, both internally and from external agencies is given so we can provide the best possible care for our students so that they can meet the, meet the curriculum and the need. Our learning support assistants work with designated students within a year group. This allows them to glean a clear understanding of their needs and strategies to support. They additionally track and monitor progress and liaise with parents on a regular basis. We offer a range of specific intervention sessions in our hub, which include handwriting, reading, literacy, numeracy, touch typing, speech and language therapy, thrive, social skills and managing emotional triggers. These are offered on identification of need for our students. Parents are always contacted prior to these interventions taking place. All students are identified on teacher class lists and on joining John Cabot, a pupil profile of need is created working collaboratively with the student, parents and carers and school, which provides a more detailed information on the nature of need, including a summary of external agency reports. And most importantly, the student's own words on how they would like to be supported. We also support students at break and lunch time so they can come up to the SEN area away from the main school. I meet regularly during the year with all parents of students with SEN so we can examine progress and if there is a change of need. For further information about SEN and regarding the information report, please look at our website. Thank you. I'm now going to introduce you to one of our Outstanding Year 10 students, Addie. SEN are there to help any student with their learning needs during their lessons so they can work up to their fullest potential. Even if your child is very anxious about what they're learning about or simply aren't in the mood to work, they are there and able to help you and guide you on their way to their success. Here at John Cabot, we usually want all of our students to work up to their fullest capabilities, however, to work independently, though we do understand if they need a helping hand, which is why SCN are available to help during your lessons. Thank you for your time. Let me talk through the last part of our vision for John Cabot, which is about raising our community. We aspire to be the community school of choice. 
We'll achieve this by building and sustaining trusting and respectful relationships between staff, students, parents and carers. We will celebrate the diversity of the members of our community by enabling them to learn from each other, by encouraging them to respect each other's differences and by providing opportunities to contribute to the school life and in the wider community. John Cabot is incredibly lucky to serve a really diverse community. We want every student to feel a real sense of belonging at John Cabot. And one of the first ways we do this is by having four zones or houses, as they're often called within our school, that in some way represent the real diversity that exists in Bristol. The other significant way that we want everyone to feel that sense of belonging is through the enrichment offer that we have at John Cabot. What we want students to do is feel a sense of success outside of the academic curriculum, and this is where enrichment comes in. And to do that, uh, or to explain it to you, I'd like you to meet Chris Oxley, who is the head of Key Stage 3 and also in charge of enrichment. Hi, I'm Chris Oxley, um, head of Year Key, three, uh, key Stage 3 and uh, enrichment at John Cabot. Um, today I'm going to discuss with you some um, brief ideas that we have or some ideas that we have with uh, the enrichment programme that we're going to be running this year. Um, we are looking at uh, some pretty different ideas trying to get uh, um, our kids outside um, again um, after being locked down for such a long time um, to find their sense of self and place in the world uh, by offering different opportunities and experiences. So um, having some uh, clubs set up uh, that they can get out and um, uh, and enjoy. So the type of things we're talking about are gardening club, um, which link in with some form of cottage industry uh, that we can get involved with, with some JCA branding and uh, some merchandising and all that type of stuff. Um, and then we'll look at uh, the potential of creating um, a Christmas tree orchard uh, and looking after our apple tree existing orchard uh, to bring in some form of uh, um, links with uh, the curriculum that we do in food and, uh, and other places in the school. We're also going to be looking at um, providing a podcast and media club um, and then linking uh, something uh, really um, special, which is the ArtsMark. All of the CLF schools are going to be linking with ArtsMark. Um, and that's uh, one of the main focuses uh, for the beginning of this year, certainly in the first term which is to tell the journey of our lockdown period. Uh, our students have gone through a, a, a massive journey um, over the last six months um, and it's their opportunity to tell their stories. So uh, we will do that um, over the course of the next uh, uh, few months um, so that when students start next year, you'll be able to take on uh, a little bit of that. Um, enrichment is going to be um, an ev ever evolving uh, unit. There will be more programmes uh, being added uh, each term. Um, we'll have uh, student councils, links with the uh, local community and a think tank, which is uh, all about fundraising and coming up with fun ideas to uh, raise money for the school. So I look forward to meeting you all uh, when you get here uh, and the enrichment programme will be up and running when you do. Can I introduce you now to Ella May, one of our year 11 students? Right. Hello, here at John Cabot Academy, there is a great sense of community we have four different communities, Rowling, Nows, Banksy and Ardman. However, because of the pandemic, we are now in year group bubbles. They're from year seven to 11. When the year, new year seven start, all the teachers will guide them to success. All the students want to help each other so we can get the best out of our education. Now more than ever, we are wanting to help each other because the teachers have a specialised box in the classroom to keep everyone safe. Also, because of the pandemic, John Cabot Academy have done a risk assessment. This makes me feel really safe when coming into school. At lunchtime, the staff are lovely and will help you to find your way around the school and help you meet new people. The year group bubbles are really good and helpful because we can sit next to people who are in our year group and we can have our own lunch times and break times, which makes every, everybody feel safer at John Cabot Academy. Your child will have a great time at our school. Thank you, Ella May. I thought it would be interesting for you to have some understanding of some of the adaptations that have taken place here as a result of COVID. We have 
a full curriculum and full timetable that is delivered by specialist teachers. And in order to do that, the staff stay in their classrooms and the students move around the building. That means we have within the school a very strong one way system. Every corridor in the school is part of a one way system and we have very strong lesson transition management. Certain back to ready to learn, we describe the behaviours that we want for our students as they transition around the building. We are uh, insisting upon two metre distancing between different members of staff and between each year group bubble. That way the specialist teachers can deliver to more than one different year group. Each of the year group bubbles has their own separate entrance and we have two staggered entry times. Again, each year group has their own separate uh, social space and they each have staggered breaks and lunches. By putting these measures in place, what it means is we can have, as I said at the top, a full curriculum delivered by specialist teachers. I'd like to introduce you now to Julie Jarrett, who's our admissions officer, who will talk through the admissions process. Hello, I'm Julie Jarrett, the admissions officer here at John Cabot Academy. I just want to talk through the admissions process if you want your year six child to join us in September. So the closing date for applications is the 31st of October and you need to submit these applications to your home local authority. You will then find out um, on the 1st of March whether your application has been successful. Students with EHCPs do not need to apply through this process. They will um, follow the arrangements set out in the SEND Code of Practice and John Cabot will need to be named on the EHCP, the health care plan. If we are oversubscribed, the criteria is looked after children or children who are previously looked after. Then it will be siblings, so that's siblings or brothers and sisters of children who are currently here in years 7 to 11 or if the student was previously here in year 7 to 11 and is currently in year 12 of the CLF post 16. Following this procedure, if we still have places, it goes to a geographic consideration. So those living closest to the school will be given priority. Distances from home to the school are measured in a straight line between the address point of a child's home and a central point within the main school building. If we have um, more students applying, then uh, who, sorry, where not possible to resolve the allocations by the above oversubscribed means, remaining places will be allocated on a random selection process. This will be supervised by an independent body. For more information on the admission process, please visit the John Cabot Academy website. Thank you, Julie. So what next? Um, I would encourage you to follow us on Facebook and Twitter with uh, at John Cabot News so that you can understand what's going on in the Academy day to day and it gives you a good flavour of all the different events that we have going on. Can I refer you to our website? So there's an opportunity if you wish to watch this uh, open evening presentation again. We also have a virtual tour of the building. So we uh, have about a two minute video on there that takes you around John Cabot Academy. You will also find on the website the opportunity to book a visit. So we are doing visits after the school day. So at either 3.15, 4pm or 5pm, depending on the day of the week where we can tour at up to four families maximum every Monday to Thursday until October the 23rd. Thank you so much for attending our open evening event today and we look forward to seeing you soon.